Okay, today we're going to be talking about uh, dry suits and also water testing dry suits as to what you can do at home yourself before you need to take it into a shop or send it back to the factory to identify where you feel the suit is leaking. There's no better person than you because you're the person diving it. If we have the suit come back to us, it means we've got to do a submersion test, identify the leak, then do the repair. So by giving us a better opportunity as to where you feel it's leaking allows us to magnify ourselves onto that area of the suit and look for that particular leak before we get into leaving it submerged in the tanks for X number of minutes or hours to try and identify the leak. There are several ways that you can actually test a suit and the best way we've found over the years is never test the suit the right way around. Always test it inside out and that's turning the inside suit inside out completely, blocking off the wrist seal with a pill bottle or a chewing gum bottle or something of that nature with elastic bands around either side. Again, I've seen people use traffic cones and stick it up in the air and, and put an elastic band around. In our case, we use a, a inverted bucket with an inflator on the top. Obviously, we don't expect you to have that, but you can turn this round back to front so you can inflate it through here if you so wish. So you know roughly where the leak is occurring on you and where you're getting primarily wet. So you can actually look and focus on that area. So blow the suit up to the point where it's fairly hard, but be very, very careful because this bucket can shoot out and be like a rocket. So don't take it to the extremities where this is bulging right out and it's about to shoot off into the ceiling. So do it so it's nice and firm because air will travel through that leak somewhere, wherever you feel it's leaking. Several reasons a suit could leak is it could be the cuff, uh, the auto dump has got dirt in it or it's leaking around there or it's loose, it needs tightening. Uh, the, wrist, the neck seal's been cut too big and it's leaking down through the neck seal, tracks down through the body and ends up into the crutch. Um, same with the inflation, it could have a, a blippy o-ring that needs servicing or cleaning out and that's something we'll cover later on on the, the, the maintenance of them on a daily basis. But most importantly, 90% of the suits come back are usually user error and we're finding more and more people are going in the water overweight. And if they're diving overweight, they've got to compensate it with a dry suit. And that's why it's called a variable volume dry suit, because you can inject and take air out of this suit whenever you want to. And we find that more people are putting more and more air into the suit purely to keep buoyancy. And that in turn allows the next seal to blip and the water will track down through the body and end up into the crutch area. And the crutch area has got the biggest squeeze on a dive because there's no air that migrates through the crutch area. So from the, the mid chest area down, that's all fairly tight. So the water will get to that point and it just lock off. And you will think, oh, it's the crutch that's leaking. Whereas in actual fact, it could be the neck seal or it could be the valve. So once we've turned this inside out, we can then paint it with a 50-50 mix to find the leak. Or, if you don't want to get messy, you can leave it in the living room pumped up as it is there. Leave it for 24 hours and leave it overnight. Next morning, if the, if the suit's gone soft, you know there's a leak. If it's still at the same intensity as it is now, you know it's not the suit leaking. It's got to be a user error. So you've got to start looking and investigating other areas on, on the dry suit. Again, bearing in mind, don't leave it in the garage because... You've pumped it up in the living room or in the kitchen or in the house where it's warm. You go and take it out in the garage, temperature drops overnight. It doesn't pick up again until next morning, mid-morning, somewhere around there. And when you go in to see this in the morning, it's all floppy and loose. So you need to keep the, the room or keep it in an area where the temperature is constant. So you can get a constant volume of air in the suit. I'm not going to test this one because it's a bit hard. So what we've done, we make a balloon with all the necessary seams on it. And to make a clean test, we use a spray gun and we put what they call a 50-50 mix, 50% liquid soap and water. And then you know roughly where the leak is and you're going to be looking for it. So we'll say this is in the, the arm area and we're going to do a check. So we spray this onto the suit, bearing in mind it's a 50-50 mix. And to get the foam to bubble up, we paint it. And once we painted it, we then stop and wait for any bubble migration or bubble blowing in the seam. Obviously there's none there, give it another coat. There's none there. Now I know this balloon doesn't leak, 
So I'm going to have to make you a, a slight leak. So this is a typical example. We use a small needle and we'll create a small hole in here. So you can actually see what you're going to be looking for. Nothing. Let's go a bit deeper. Bear in mind this is a, a sewing needle, so it's quite severe. That's got it. So now if I paint that, as you can see, it's blowing away the bubbles, or blowing away the foam. It's also creating me a bubble. So I now know I have a leak in that area. Now at home, I can do that self-repair, or I can send it back to the dealer and say, look, I've got a leak right here. I need a patch. Or the dealer then can send it back to us and say, okay, he's got a leak right there. Can you patch that for me? That's a simple way of testing a dry suit.